as I'm sure you know, uh, infections, falls, pressure injuries were all quite problematic going back to the early 2000s. And a lot of work has been done by CMS to change reimbursement to improve these outcomes, AHRQ to improve the measurement of these outcomes. And we've seen drastic change really for the better as a whole. Hi, I'm uh, William Padula. I'm an assistant professor of health economics at the University of Southern California. I'm really pleased to talk about our paper today in uh, Mayo Clinic proceedings, the uh, complexity bias uh, in the prevention of iatrogenic injury. And really what this comes from is a number of issues or harms that have happened in patient uh, populations over the past decade. Uh, AHRQ reports that iatrogenic injury rates or hospital acquired condition rates have gone down 13% between 2014 and 2017. This accounts for a savings of $7.7 .7 billion and about 20,000 deaths averted. So all good news across the board. Uh, in my role as the president of the National Pressure Injury Advisory Panel though, what we've observed is a national increase in the rates of pressure injuries in fact, increasing by as much as 6% during that same time frame from 2014 to 2017. And uh, that could equate to as much as 70 to $80 billion in expenditures just on pressure injuries. So an increase of 58.4% shows that some of the solutions that have been introduced on the whole for iatrogenic injury prevention haven't addressed the needs of certain individual conditions. And the reason why this is important is going back to 2008, you had CMS withhold reimbursements for hospital acquired conditions, and that saw a decrease overall in many of these outcomes. But then in 2014, CMS introduced a payment policy whereby hospitals would be penalized for increased rates of, of composite rates of hospital acquired conditions. So you could get your pressure injury rate stable or actually have it increase. And as long as the average rate of your infections and falls and other hospital acquired conditions goes down, on average, you're performing better and avoiding a penalty. Uh, what we believe this is actually resulting in is what we call in the paper a complexity bias, or that is healthcare organizations have a tendency to overcomplicate the reduction of iatrogenic injury by breaking them down into many parts that address limited components of the greater problem. And what we go into this paper is the idea that there's actually a lot in common between preventing something like a pressure injury, a pressure ulcer, and preventing an infection. And what we show in uh, the classic figure one Venn diagram of our paper is that there are overlapping risk factors for many hospital acquired conditions, mainly that there's moisture management that needs to be upheld, there's nutritional management, and then there's mobility issues. And obviously, if you can control mobility issues, keep the patient well uh, nourished and manage their moisture and incontinence, you effectively prevent pressure injury. But obviously, mobility is a related issue for the outcome DVT or falls. Uh, moisture management is a, is a key component to the management of infection prevention. Nutritional management has a lot to do also with infection prevention the uh, aversion of adverse drug events and, and, and other types of hospital acquired conditions. So what we go into in this paper is a discussion of the fact that rather than creating all of these train change teams for quality improvement programs for individual iatrogenic injuries, why not consolidate these change teams and focus on the risk factors that overlap many different hospital acquired conditions? So create change teams for moisture management nutrition and mobility. And you actually tackle more conditions than just by creating a change team for sepsis and a change team for pressure injury and a change team for fall. So moving forward, we hope that CMS and AHRQ will take our recommendations and actually revise some of its measurement and payment policy structure in order to incentivize hospitals, not just to improve the average rates of hospital acquired conditions, but address the individual components to prevent all hospital acquired conditions equally and perhaps using a more efficient method like reducing complexity bias and change teams to address these individual needs. Uh, one of our proposals for CMS to think about is an equal sided risk model 
whereby hospitals that are currently already penalized for high rates of hospital acquired conditions like pressure injuries could also be rewarded for good performance, for becoming centers of excellence, investing in the right amount of nursing staff to implement these change teams and keep rates low uh, and, and using the right technology in order to prevent these outcomes. So we hope that CMS and AHRQ will take these thoughts seriously and look forward to further discussion, of course, seeing the rates of these harmful outcomes go down. I'd like to invite you to come online and read the article that uh, Dana Goldman, David Armstrong, and I have published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings, and hope that out of this, you, you learn from the Venn diagram that complexity bias is a real concern in the prevention of iatrogenic injury, and that there's more we can do to reorganize in order to better prevent these outcomes and save money doing it. Uh, I hope that you'll find this interesting and think differently with us about some of the payment and policy solutions moving ahead. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.